And I don't want any cool kids on the edges of the room saying just, or just mouthing. <laughs> I want you as loud as you can. We only get 150th, so as loud as you can. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's Saturday, October 15th at 7.40 in the morning. The beer mile last night left me a teeny tiny little bit wobbly, so I am drinking a new, not a new, this is a Gatorade, a goo. Yeah, this is a goo hydration mix. I'm also trying to come up with a funny sign for today's races. Today there's a 5K and a 10K, and I'm waiting for the vlog to save. There is seven minutes and 12 seconds remaining. So I'm gonna try to come up with something really funny. Hey, Pam. Like, uh, <laughs> Do you like free fitness? <laughs> hey! Free fitness! Woo! <laughs> my dad, my dad's here, that's cool. <laughs> Ethan Russell of Harrisburg, who What's ran up, a 3320. All right, Kelly, not running the race. race. That was the winning time. I put normal shoes on so that I wouldn't. For the women. Hey, hey. Are you going to win? Yeah. He's, in the, he's near the front. Why not? He's somewhere in the top five. Hey, you're going to win. Okay. Those days are This guy's what? His beard. No! in the 10K again here and now, I believe. Grand Slammers, raise your hand, you Slammer Yoga extraordinaire. Ooh, you're like Britney Spears. Just, I actually feel like her when I have this. Gentlemen, we have two time Olympian Sarah Tarr. And Sarah and I are, uh, we are teammates here at the Runner's World Half Marathon. And I have been bugging Sarah to tell me all about Rio pretty much from the moment she walked in the hotel room. So I thought it would be fun to share with you guys what it's like to run the Olympic Marathon because Sarah ran the Olympic Marathon this year in Rio. Hashtag road to Rio. Hashtag road to Rio. Okay. Road to Tokyo. Yeah, now she's going for Tokyo. <laughs> Sarah, start from the beginning. What's it like running in the Olympics? Because you've now done it twice. I have. I do feel like my experience is very um, unique, probably, compared to a lot of experiences. But it also reminds me that everyone's story getting to the Olympics has um, its own like ups and downs and really unique story to it, which is really cool. Um, and also just getting to be in the same area as like the world's best athletes yeah. is super inspiring and... Like could you imagine lining up to like towing the line of a marathon behind Shalane Flanagan? Like that's what Sarah did. <laughs> yeah, we were like getting ready and then we're like have our ice vests on before the race and 
I like see all these athletes that I keep up with and then I'm like, oh wait, I'm about to like run in the same race with them in the Olympics. So Sarah, what country did you run for? So I've represented Saudi Arabia. Which is Olympics. amazing because... Because this was only the second time they ever sent female athletes. And I also had the opportunity to go the first time that they ever sent female athletes to the Olympics. Which is incredible. What's that like? Yeah, that's huge. Um, I'm so grateful for that opportunity to be this like role model now and to have this like voice to the younger generation and even the current generation. Um, I have so many people who email me and message me like telling me what an inspiration I've been for them, which is so profound and it's really incredible to be able to be in a position to have that kind of influence. It's in what's it like training for Rio, because Rio was hot. How hot and humid was it when you guys ran? Very. <laughs> and you run was, covered. I do, yeah. So we um, we totally trained for that though. We, I was in Mammoth Lakes all summer training, so we had the altitude on our side, and then it was also a pretty warm summer. Um, so I just wore like extra layers and- We are in a it. swarm of mosquitoes <laughs> also. Just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> okay, keep going. Yeah, so um, we prepped for it. So that actually like didn't really phase me during the race. Like it obviously took its toll physically, um, as the heat will. But um, it didn't like feel like it was totally detrimental in the race. Were you really cool. able to enjoy the race and just be there like totally surreal, or was it like a normal marathon where you were like head down, heart up, wings um. out? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah runs for Wazel. Actually, okay, let's get back to that question in a minute. Because I want to talk about Wazelle because you got to design what you wore in the Olympics with Wazelle. I, yeah, that was a big part of it too. That was really exciting leading up. Um, I was in touch with Sally a little bit before, um, like when I first joined them. And we started talking about like, okay, if I did have the opportunity to represent Saudi Arabia again in the Olympics, um, what what would my outfit look like, because I would want to be wearing Wazelle. So we started working on this outfit, so I had the opportunity to design that, and it came together really nicely, I thought. That's amazing. All right, let's get back to like running the actual marathon itself. Yeah. What was that like, running the Olympic marathon? Yeah, it was um, very much like, I felt like I was just like in a race, like doing my thing. I was there to um, run my own race, and I feel like I did that, and we did it successfully. And then um, it was also very surreal though, because I would, um, there, were, there were loops on the course and at points I could see like the top runners kind of on the other side of the loop. So I had the opportunity to like kind of also be a spectator on the race, which was really cool. Um, but while still like racing it and being in that same race with them. Um, so that was really special to experience the, the marathon in that way, to not only be watching it, but be part of it and part of it for a really big reason. Who would you have on the course? Uh, my coach was actually able to hand out my bottles on the course, which was amazing. Shout out to Mammoth Track Club and Andrew Caster <laughs> for being there for me through all of it. Um, and so that was really special. My whole family was out on the course. Um, Alexi Papas was out there because she was Alex. representing Greece in the 10K and Aww, had an cool. amazing race and then my race was two days later, so she was out there um, cheering me on with her coach. So it actually felt like very Normal. unique and like even more um, special than other races because usually oh. you just see them for like a second and then you might even miss them in a regular marathon. Um, but it was very much like they were part of it with me. Are there, is it more stressful to run in the Olympics than you would say running like a big high profile race? like? Boston or something? Um, in different ways, like yes and no, because parts of it are a lot more relaxed um, because there's only like a hundred and something people in this race. So you don't have to wait in like quarter potty lines for forever and you don't have to like get shuttled to the start. I mean, in the sense that like, you're kind of being like um, herded around to get to that race. So it's a lot more relaxed in that sense. Um, and then the race itself is very different because I was in the back, so I like was kind of running by myself a lot of the time, which I've never had a marathon like that. You know, you're usually with like 30,000 other people on yeah. the course. So it was a very different, um, but both have their like pros, definitely. What's your favorite memory from the race? This will be our last question because then we're gonna go to dinner. 
Oh. Um, it can be during the race or even in Rio in general. I think, like, the finishing the race, obviously, because it was, like, ever, the culmination of all the prep getting to that point. And it was so important to me to finish that race and finish it well. Um, and there was actually a big dropout in this race because it was so hot. So to be able to do that and just, like, meet up with, like, my family and my coach and everyone afterwards and, like, we did it and we did this well was really gratifying. All right, one last thing. What is your best piece of advice to anyone who wants to, like, run a race that they feel is, like, out of their athletic levels, so, like a half marathon or a marathon or a 10K oh or a 5K? Yeah. Like, what's the what's the best thing that they can do? If it's, if there's something that's, like, drawing you to that distance, there's a reason for that, and I feel like that's, like, calling you to it, and it means that you can do it, and you just have to put in the work. I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned by going to the Olympics when I haven't qualified and like training with this like really elite group of athletes that I haven't quite hit the level of is that it's not just like some superhuman ability, it's hard work 100%. So that's that's what it takes and um, it's a process to learn that but you get there and you just like keep going. So. Sarah's the coolest. <laughs> yeah, coolest. The most cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Tar. How can we follow you on the social media? Um, I'm on Instagram the most, and that is at Sarah Tar, which is just my name spelled out, Sarah with an H, A-T-T-A-R. And on Twitter and on Facebook, I'm at the Sarah Tar. So. Go follow her. She takes really, really beautiful pictures. I'm getting random people texting me. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Just a couple people doing the run this world thing with the hair flying. Yeah. <laughs> Naked, short, short, tall, black, white, yes. thing, all different color bodies, smiling and doing it together. And the runner's world effect and the word community hit when that magazine hit stage. We went from seven tribes, one of which was in Canada, six in the United States, to that next sprint once people had finally read all the articles. And we boomed into 17 cities around the world. And now I'm standing here with you guys, getting ready to celebrate our five year birthday this November. 31 cities around the world. We're changing the way people think about spending money, and this work community is huge. At these workouts, we hug, we look each other in the eye, we say, Yeah, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> right? Pardon my French, sorry. <laughs> but what we do is we respect each other, we work really hard, and we show up no matter what. Never late. Your feet of snow, it doesn't matter. So, we're going to do a little November project petition, and we're going to sing happy birthday to all of us in the what I think is great about community is that it is equally shared with whoever in our world shows up. Whoever is in the room, whoever is at the starting line of the race, oh, yes. it's equally for everyone. Community yeah. is all of ours. This is 50th birthday for everyone in this room, everyone at the race, everyone who's ever picked up a magazine. So, we're going to sing happy birthday. <laughs> and I don't want any cool kids on the edges of the room saying just, or just mouthing. <laughs> I want you as loud as you can. We only get 150th, so as loud as you can. And when you come to the part where you have to put in a name, I want you to say Runner's World, but I want you to look at someone. Or say Sue. So your options are Runner's World or Sue. As loud as you can. Everybody in the room, no cool kids. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday!